You cannot enter here, said Gandalf, and the huge shadow halted. Go back to the abyss prepared for you. Go back. Fall into the nothingness that awaits you and your master. Go! The Black Rider flung back his hood, and behold, he had a kingly crown, and yet upon no head visible was it set. The red fire shone between it and the mantled shoulders, vast and dark. From a mouth unseen there came a deadly laughter. Old fool, he said. Old fool, this is my hour. Do you not know death when you see it? Die now and curse in vain. And with that, he lifted high his sword, and flames ran down the blade. Almost the battle had begun at that very moment. Gandalf against the Witch King, the leader of the forces of good against the general of evil. And though unspoken, many fans feel deep inside them tinge of regret over the arrival of the Rohirrim which stopped this legendary showdown before it truly began. But what if their arrival at the Battle of Minas Tirith had been only slightly delayed? What if this truly epic battle had come to pass? Gandalf versus the Witch King who would have won this duel? Who would have destroyed the other? And who, in this victory, would have decided the fate of the Siege of Gondor? First of all, it must be said that the entire Siege of Minas Tirith was an indirect battle between Gandalf and the Witch King fought without direct contact, but instead through planning, strategy, and their personal commands on the field. In the end, Gandalf had won this showdown in the books, for the troops he had mustered in his long preparation were indeed sufficient to prevent the Witch King from defeating his army and entering the White City. However, what would have happened instead in a direct confrontation, in a true physical duel of these immortal titans? First, we must take a good look at our two combatants. What are their strengths and weaknesses? In the one corner, we have Mithrandir reborn, Gandalf the White. He is a Maya, an immortal spirit older than creation itself, sent to Middle-earth by the divine Valar, as one of the only five known Istari to aid the free peoples in their struggle against Sauron. He was incarnated into the form of an old human man, his vast supernatural wisdom and power limited and subjected to mortal impairments like fear, pain and exhaustion. Limited and subjected, because the Valar, the shapers and rulers of the world, feared the Istari desiring to become rulers in their own right, much like the Maya Sauron. The Istari were to be helpers and advisors, and not to fight the Dark Lord themselves head on. Gandalf, however, was slightly different from his fellow Istari. He had already sacrificed himself and had died fighting the Balrog in Moria. After his death, he was sent back to Middle-earth by Iluvatar, the creator himself, with increased power as Gandalf the White to complete his mission to overthrow Sauron. Of course he remains similar in personality and idiosyncrasy, but both his wisdom and power 
are much greater. He is still under the obligation of concealing his power, but where the physical powers of the enemy are too strong, he can act in emergency as an angel. Just like Gandalf himself said to Gimli in the Two Towers. Dangerous, and so am I. Very dangerous. More dangerous than anything you will ever meet, unless you are brought alive before the seat of the Dark Lord. But how dangerous, how powerful was Gandalf really? One example shows this clearly, his fight against the Ringwraiths. What many don't know is that before his arrival in Rivendell, Gandalf the Grey was attacked and besieged on Weathertop by the Witch King and five other Nazgûl. A great battle of light and flame continued throughout the night until the next morning, when the wizard was able to escape from his enemies and flee. Then, five months later, before the battle of the Pelennor Fields in front of Minas Tirith, the tide had turned. Twice Gandalf the White had shown his power and had driven away the winged raids in mere seconds, for the eight lesser ring raids could not counter the white light which he threw at them and which caused them great pain. They were now powerless against the white wizard. In our story, the Rohirrim would not appear at just the right time, and as a result, Gandalf would inevitably have to face the Witch King of Angmar, the supreme general and most powerful servant of Sauron. Of the nine Nazgûl, he was by far the strongest in every respect. Eternally bound to the world by his ring of power, the Witch King was surrounded by powerful wards that made him invulnerable to common weapons. Every blade that touched him shattered. Only the daggers of the hobbits, once forged in Arnor for exactly the purpose of fighting the darkest of the servants of Sauron, could penetrate those spells and inflict serious, devastating wounds on the Lord of the Nazgul. Neither Dwarven Blade nor Elven Sword could have done this. However, the Nazgul are not primarily warriors, as Tolkien writes in one of his letters. Their peril is almost entirely due to the unreasoning fear which they inspire, like ghosts. They have no great physical power against the fears, but what they have, and with the fear that they inspire, is enormously increased in darkness. This was also true of the Witch King. In early events he had avoided encounters with equal opponents, as cunning and ambush had always been his methods. So, would he even have stood a chance in a straight-up fight against Gandalf? Definitely. For just as the wizard had grown in strength since their last encounter on Weathertop, Sauron in turn had empowered the Witch King. As Tolkien wrote, The Witch King, their leader, is more powerful in all ways than the others. There, put in command by Sauron, he is given an added demonic force. So the Dark Lord had poured some of his very own power into him, making the Lord of Minas Morgul stronger than ever. For Sauron knew that Gandalf had returned and might have the One Ring. He also knew that if that were indeed the case, it would take a warrior of great power to challenge the White Wizard. How strong the Witch King actually became through Sauron's power can not be said with certainty. However, 
even before the siege of Gondor, Gandalf ponders and says that the Lord of the Nazgul may now be more powerful than he himself. So how would a duel between these seemingly equal opponents have ended? In the siege of Gondor, Gandalf wielded the sword Glamdrin, a legendary elven blade from the First Age, crafted in the forges of Gondolin to rend the flesh of the servants of darkness. Though, unless he imbued that weapon with some spell, it would be of little use against the Witch King. Whether the blade would shatter on contact with the Lord of the Nazgul due to his wards is unclear, but even if it did not, it would not do much damage. The Morgul Lord, on the other hand, wielded an enchanted flaming sword. While Gandalf may also have had some form of wards protecting him from harm from ordinary weapons, even this cannot be said for certain. And as the Witch King's sword was by no means ordinary, it would pose a serious threat to the White Wizard. So when it came to their weapons, the Lord of the Nazgul would have a serious advantage. Would that have made Gandalf defenseless? No, as Gandalf himself said, Here in Rivendell there still live some of Sauron's chief foes, the Elven Wise, Lords of the Eldar from beyond the furthest seas. They do not fear the Ring Raids, for those who have dwelled in the Blessed Realm live at once in both worlds and against both the seen and the unseen, they have great power. But not just those elven wise held that power. Gandalf himself came from the Blessed Realm, and thus he too lived in both worlds at once, the seen and the unseen world, or as we better know them, the real world and the shadow. As such, especially after his elevation upon his rebirth as the White Wizard, he could see the Witch King in his true form, and in that he could fight him. He had already shown his might against the Lesser Nazgul in the form of the white light he threw at them, and those ring raids could not stand it, not even for a second. So Gandalf would most likely not leave this power unused in this duel with the Witch King. When it was cast from a great distance, it had shown its great might, though the Nazgul had not suffered lasting damage. And as for whether this would be useful against their leader, the story hints at this directly, when Gandalf casts this spell at the Lesser Eight. Shadowfax bore him shining, unveiled once more, a light starting from his upraised hand. The Nazgul screeched and swept away, for their captain was not yet come to challenge the white fire of his foe. This captain of the Nazgul, the Witch King, was also powerful in the arts of sorcery. When he faced Frodo at the force of Bruinen, he was able to break the halfling sword without effort. Later, at the siege of Gondor, he cried aloud in a dreadful voice, speaking in some forgotten tongue words of power and terror to rend both hearth and stone, imbuing the battering ram Grond with enough power to break the gates of Gondor. And in a similar manner, the Witch King might use this sorcery in his fight against Gandalf to destroy his sword or staff, similar to how it was shown in the movies, though, mind you, in the movies alone. So who would then win this fight? The duel would probably be pretty even, and neither would easily win. But who would ultimately strike down the other now depends on two things. First of all, the time of day. 
because as we said before, the Nazgul are strongest in complete darkness and the dead of night. When the gate of Minas Tirith was breached, it was just early morning. So the Witch King was past the peak of his power and waning further. Secondly, it is not quite known if Gandalf the White ever used his full might. He tended to conceal his true form, just like he hid his reborn inner light under his old grey robes. It is therefore possible that he could summon even more power to attack the Witch King. But the fact is, we don't know. If we, however, take into account everything we know, from just what Tolkien wrote and shared, then our decision is quite certain. The most likely winner would be the Witch King. He wielded the deadlier weapon and was immune to most, if not all, physical attacks from Gandalf himself. He could also take on the wizard's white fire, as he was the captain of the Nazgul, sent to challenge him. Although Gandalf the White also possessed the ring of fire, Narya, it would not have helped him, because the elven rings were in no way forged for war, but instead for preservation and protection, and thus only could have aided Gandalf as a mild defense. For the free peoples, this duel would have been seminal. With the defeat and death of Gandalf, no one would have stood in the way of Sauron's final victory. He would have broken the last great bastion of the free peoples, freeing his attention to find the One Ring, and he would have found it. The Age of Man would have ended here, ere it truly began, and the world would have been plunged into a new age of darkness. Thus we conclude this theory and this video. Did the answer surprise you, or do you outright disagree? Let us know in the comments. We would love to hear your take on it. If you enjoyed it and would like to learn more of the world of Tolkien, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when Mysteries of Westerners returns to Arda. This has been Irjikor Kuruvale, and I wish you all Namaria Meldonyar.